Welcome to a special edition of Straight Talk. Today's discussion is timely and on a topic that's often welcomed and at the same time, sometimes confusing. How to use AI in disaster restoration operations. Our guest today will share her insights on how to embrace AI across various restoration business operations, both in the field and in the office, with a focus on solving some of the toughest challenges you face as a restoration pro. So Caitlin, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. It's a pleasure. Let's start here. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell us what you do at CoreLogic and what CoreLogic is doing as it looks at artificial intelligence tools today. My name is Caitlin Rios. I am the VP of product for our restoration division. So I oversee um, tools like Dash and Mitigate, our CRM tools, Engage, and a number of others, including our um, BI and reporting solution. Um, and then within the restoration space, uh, you know, CoreLogic has been using AI in both the restoration space and, and in our research for many, many years. Um, so at CoreLogic, our goal is to support the restoration industry in rebuilding communities so that we are all more resilient. Um, we accomplish this by empowering workforces, especially with AI-driven technologies. And we've actually been using AI within CoreLogic for many years. Um, AI is sort of our, well, it's here and it's sort of our new way of life, right? Uh, and, but like I said, we've been using it for many years and it's really just been in the last maybe two years with the explosion of new AI technologies and these tools where the conversation has been more prominent, I think, with, with folks like yourself. Um, I do think it's helpful to understand a little bit about what AI is. So when I say that we've been using it for a long time, we have a, a, a background, a foundation to talk about. Um, AI is technology that allows machines, computers, and ultimately software to mimic human logic, uh, thought patterns, and ultimately take actions, make determinations, and even decisions, which sometimes can feel a little uh, nerve wracking, right? That the, the thought of AI is, um, can be a little scary, I think. And you do need to be very cautious about validating the outputs from these AI tools, as well as making sure that you're putting data into these tools that is appropriate, right? Data, the best data in, the best outcomes out. Caitlin, thank you for that. It's good to see CoreLogic embracing AI and adding it to its tools. And I, I know the ones you described, they're using the industry, they're making a difference. But you're right, people have concerns. I have friends who are afraid of AI and I'm like, they're, it's not gonna take over the world. There aren't gonna be robots out there. Maybe they watch Terminator too many times, I don't know. But why don't you talk about that a little bit? Talk about some top concerns. You mentioned a couple, but what else are you hearing out there that some might be like, yeah, I wanna stay away from AI? Yeah, I think it's natural to be a little afraid of the unknown and AI, especially the power behind AI is, relatively unknown to a lot of us. Um, people are gonna struggle with the use of it, right? Uh, is AI gonna take over my job? Um, as a business owner, should I, I use AI? How do I use AI? Um, is my team gonna push back if I use AI? Um, but what if I don't? Like, what are the risks if I don't? And, and that's, I think, what we ultimately really need to think about is there is a lot of risks to not using AI. Uh, you know, Garrett um, recently, Garrett Gray uh, recently wrote an article with the tagline, I think it was the, to the effect of AI will not replace humans in the workforce, but companies using AI will replace restorers that ignore it. And that's a really powerful message, right? Like you said, Hollywood's kind of done a, a great job of making us all believe that the robots are coming for us. Um, whenever I talk about this topic, you know, kind of inevitably somebody will raise their hand or, or shout out, um, you know, are, are the robots going to take over the world? And my answer is always, gosh, I hope not. That's really going to damper my plans. Right. Um, but I will tell you, like, if we don't get start getting comfortable with AI and the tools that are available to us, uh, you're wasting your time. And if you're a business owner, you're really wasting money. I do know that AI has been here for a long time. If you use your phone, if you use Google Maps, if you talk to 
I hate to say it too loud, Siri or Alexa, you're going to be using AI. It's just everywhere. So here we are. We're, we're talking about it, but I'd like to know what you find most interesting about AI that can help those who are not as familiar with it. You know, besides the automatic use in, in technology, what's interesting to you? Yeah. Um, so I actually love writing a number of things with, with chat GPT. Um, and I, if you haven't already, I strongly encourage you to open up chat GPT and ask it to write a funny limerick in old English or, you know, pick a genre. Um, cause it's fun and it's enjoyable and, uh, it feels safe, right? That these, when we talk about AI is scary, there's some things that are just relatively safe and easy to do. Um, you know, if robots come and take over the world, uh, even if that is going to happen, I don't think that depriving my kids of a funny joke that AI wrote for me, that is kid appropriate, is going to change any of that, right? So I, I do that a lot. I, I, I love to use chat GPT for silly things like that. Um, but I also use it a lot in my personal life to help me refine searches. Uh, I actually recently took a trip to Yellowstone National Park. Um, and I effectively did zero research prior to packing. So basically the day before I left, I'm, I'm here packing and I grab my phone. I'm like, uh, chat GPT, tell me where I should go for the next three days while I'm in Yellowstone. And um, what should I look at? What attraction should I see? I want to do something that is um, adventurous, but also uh, relaxing. And it gave me this amazing itinerary, right? Of like, here's the exact things that you should go look at. And then I can decide which of those I want to do and which I don't. Um, so there's, there's just so much power in that type of a tool that again is safe and things that are, are relatively easy to start using. And then once you get used to that, I think you can start using it more in your professional life. I like the idea of the trip. That's fantastic. I mean, AI, like chat GPT, it's a search engine. It looks, it provides information just like Google. But I'll tell you what, the details it gives you are so more expanded. You don't get a simple answer to a question. You get a little mini article, you might say, that has all the details. So how was that trip? It was amazing, actually. Um, and, and to your point, you do get basically a mini article. And I love that you can ask it an, a second prompt. It remembers what you previously asked. And like, hey, refine my search to this. Or don't forget, I want to add in, where can I eat? You know, give me some restaurant suggestions. So it, it's amazing. And, and thank you for asking about the trip. It was, a, if you ever get the chance, by far, it's amazing. I've, I've been there. I didn't have the advantage. I didn't think about using AI to make it a better trip. But, you know, it was good. Next time. Next time. I will do that. So let's dig into the professional part of this. What can restoration pros do to position themselves in the new AI world? And how can CoreLogic help with that? Um, well, most importantly, I think uh, restoration professionals need to just be curious. Uh, like I said, try using it for your own personal life. But um, from a more business related sense, think of things like if you're on a Teams or a Zoom call and you don't want to write notes, you can act have AI take those notes for you so that you can be more present in that conversation. That's helped me significantly to really feel like I'm listening and being able to respond back rather than focusing on, did I get every detail written down? Um, it's great for analyzing spreadsheets. Uh, it's great for um, if you're going to write an email and you want it to verify the tone of that email, did I, did I hit the mark? Right. You can have AI do that. Uh, Copilot. I, we use Copilot here in CoreLogic quite extensively um, with Microsoft, which has been really helpful for us. Um, but it, let's also talk about how can you use that as truly as a restoration professional within the restoration industry. Um, maybe you're thinking of replacing some of your equipment. Why not ask AI to um, understand if you should? Right. Try something like this. Um, I own a water mitigation company in San Diego, California. I'm considering buying new dehumidifiers. My current dehues are model ABCD. They're five years old and appear to be working well, but, you know, I think they need some maintenance. 
um, compare the cost of a new DHU to the cost of maintenance, right? That type of research is so powerful and something that you couldn't do two years ago, right? So why not use it for that purpose today? What you described is like talking to a consultant, just a conversation. And that's what's funny about this. What's fun about this is the AI can do that. It can have a conversation with you. And I know there's chatbots out there on websites that do that. And you could be fooled by, this is a real person. Uh, maybe it's not. It probably isn't. But but it's really interesting to see. Can. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, you absolutely can be fooled. Um, and, and I think that the idea of a consultant is a great idea. Um, I mean, think about the opportunity to even ask AI as a business owner, uh, create a SWOT analysis for my business. You know, tell I'm going to tell AI what kind of business I'm in, maybe where I'm located, or even just the name of my company and chat GPT will probably figure out where I'm located. Uh, and then it's, and maybe you give it a few prompts around these are the weaknesses that I think about or the, the, um, the strengths I think about in my own business, but you want more information. That consultant, as, the, as you mentioned, is going to give you a really insightful answer and maybe a couple of ideas that you've never thought of before that you can ask additional prompts to just keep that conversation going until you get to the answer that you think you really need. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've used it for I will, I'll put a website in there and say, analyze this website, give me the top five reasons this company is successful. I'll put a PDF in there. You mentioned surveys and I'll say, give me the top points of this survey that's best for the industry. It doesn't mean it's going to be gospel, but it's going to give you quick notes, guidance that you might not see quickly on your own. So, yeah, I, I, I'm all for it. And it's good to see what you're doing there at CoreLogic to do this. You talked about this a bit. Is there more about what CoreLogic is using AI for in its product offerings? Yeah, absolutely. So we, like I said, we've been using AI in various forms for a long time, um, from historical data to enable predictive models to the use of large language models more recently, uh, even OCR, and now uh, much more recently, generative AI. Uh, for example, CoreLogic enriched property data is actually made up of hundreds of data sources that we use AI to uh, pull together and ultimately produce the most appropriate data source um, and the most appropriate information about that property, which can then be used to validate an estimate. Maybe it's just information. You want to know, is this a two-story house or a one-story house? What's the floor plan look like, et cetera? Um, we also have forensic hazard technology with real-time algorithms optimized by machine learning to present where we think weather is likely to hit. Of course, that's very helpful, right? If you're um, storm chasing and trying to find where, where should I go next? Um, or even where do I want to put my next location? Um, image analytics is a big part of, of what we do as well. Uh, that helps you define what's in the photo. It can identify damage in a photo. It can identify um, items within the photo as well. Um, and then, of course, we also have quick diagramming that's built now within our restoration mitigate tool to help automate the diagramming and measurement process, um, which, by the way, um, if you are using that, use the calibration function within mitigate. You'll have much more accurate measurements and very helpful. A big question that I think a lot of people want help with is what can I do with AI to help with the claims process to deal with insurance companies and, and adjusters? Do you see that as an impactful part of this conversation? Absolutely. Yeah, I do. Um, I think more than anything else, AI is going to help you reduce those repetitive processes and allow humans to be more focused on the human component of the claims process. Um, take field documentation, for example. I, I mentioned um, a little bit about restoration mitigate just a minute ago with the diagramming process and, um, and the photo recognition. You know, as we sort of align the water mitigations technicians order of operations with this mobile application and allowing someone to both take those photos, scan a room to diagram and then move forward much more quickly, they can start to focus more on that human component, on talking to that that customer, making sure that they're doing well, making sure that, you know, 
um, from a um, from a viewpoint of that vase that got knocked over during this process was incredibly important to that person. Oh my gosh, how do I help fix that part of the problem, right? Um, so leveraging that those AI technologies, whether that's photo recognition or the use of LIDAR, um, that's a huge leap forward in this image to scope idea. Uh, we, we hear about that request often when we talk about claim processing. We want, uh, there's basically an expectation in this industry that we should be able to take a photo and an estimate should be written automatically. And, and CoreLogic is really starting to push forward on that exact idea. Um, so automatically creating that estimate um, and the capability will uh, of doing something like that will really, I think, eliminate that human error from the damage evaluation process to help speed along the claims process overall. Let's talk about communications from the office to the field and beyond. How does AI help with that, especially in emergency situations? We had a busy hurricane season. So what does AI do there? Sure. So um, when I think about communications, I kind of think about two things. One is that human to human conversation we were just talking about. And two is more of that sales and marketing side of communications, the communication strategy side of it. Um, so let's start with the human to human conversation first. Um, as we talked about, AI can help you streamline that claims process. And whether that's through predictive damage assessment or verification that the estimate damages match the property, as um, as seen on property. Um, I even, as I mentioned before, the, the field documentation piece of it, all of that helps you streamline that process, make things much faster so that you can focus on the human element. Um, but AI can also help uh, with restoration providers focusing on those highest priority claims. So right, we aren't mind readers, or at least I'm not, um, but if I had the power to know what was going on and which customer needed my attention at the time that they identify that they need attention, that's really powerful, right? And that's something that CoreLogic is working on right now is to help identify through the use of notes analysis, when does a customer need attention immediately? So that as I, as a restoration provider, I can jump to that customer quickly and help them, again, focus on the human component of, of working with that person directly, hopefully turning that job around very easily, right? Let, let's talk about the second component of that, the sales and marketing side of it. So marketing is, of course, crucial to supporting the sales teams by creating communication strategies and ultimately building content to enable engagement for those leads. Um, and AI can help you with a lot of that. Um, why not have AI create an email campaign with text, visuals, uh, maybe even some video uh, related directly to this industry? And then you can actually even use uh, CoreLogic Restoration CRM tools to automatically send out that drip campaign, but also build in that human component. So think of the power where technology can not only build the email and what it should look like and, and all those beautiful graphics within it, but also inform you that you, a prospect of yours opened an email, took some actions within that email, and then did nothing for three days. Well, why send them another email? Why not automate the process in, and have one of your sales team members pick up a phone or physically go and see that person to try to close a lead, right? And, and so being able to pull in AI within that communications platform so that you can focus on the human component of it is incredibly powerful. And as you're talking about this, some might be like, I don't know how to do any of that. Or you know what you do? You ask AI, how do I do this? How do I do that? I know when I do my video editing for programs like this, if I don't know something, I ask AI and it just gives me the answer. Something else that's really cool. If it creates a picture, a graph or anything and you don't like it, you say, redo it, redo it, redo it, redo it. It doesn't get mad. Absolutely. People it get mad. Get mad. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine telling uh, one of your employees, 
you don't like something, redo it 10 times. Yeah, they're out the door. AI just smiles and keeps on going. Absolutely. I agree with you. Figuratively smile. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about other cool features that you haven't covered so far. What specifically can we look forward to with core logic driven AI tools? And I believed in January, there's something special to think about. There is. Yes. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so I, the January conference is our industry conference, um, interconnect, and we will be announcing a number of AI related um, opportunities there. Um, so really excited. I, I won't give you all of the, the answers just yet. Um, and I've given a couple of comments around the, the little tidbits that we're working on. Um, so absolutely, we are working on things like image to scope and things like understanding how to um, identify when a customer needs help that are guiding people to the right jobs to look at. Um, but but like I said, I won't I won't say everything. So um, I hope that you all come and join us at Interconnect. Um, we will have a lot of cool announcements um, at our industry conference. Um, there actually will even be a number of exclusive and early access opportunities there. We started that a few years ago and uh, for for attendees, and that went really well. So continuing along that process. Um, so if you're interested in kind of seeing the first, being one of the first to um, see some of these AI technologies and to uh, to play around with them, come to the conference and you can probably get on a couple of betas to be able to do just that. We call that a strong teaser, Caitlin. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That is true. Well, Caitlin, thank you for this information. Uh, looking toward the future, how do you foresee AI changing, reshaping the industry maybe in the next five or 10 years. And let us know any final words of advice you'd like to share for those who are really interested in AI. Yeah, um, you know, I think AI will shape this industry in ways that we can't even imagine is probably the most accurate answer that I could give to that. Um, but I expect that AI will be used in whether you realize it or not in almost every process that we go through. Um, when you're out taking photos, the opportunities that are exist within AI to use those photos to automate additional functionality. We, we mentioned some of those earlier um, are huge. The opportunities, whether maybe it's video instead of photos or um, maybe it's the conversation with um, the chatbot tool that you mentioned. There, those are going to just explode. It's going to continue to be used in more and more applications. And um, it's going to continue to be just part of our everyday lives, right? So, so one thing I will say in closing, it just like as a someone who believes in this topic as strongly as I do. Um, I would encourage everyone to go try it. And I would really think for business owners, really encourage you to talk to your teams about this tool uh, or these tools, this opportunity. I, again, people are scared of it, but if you sit down and talk to folks about, hey, if, if you had the opportunity, if you had time, Right. There's, we always talk about there's never enough time in the day. So if you had time to do something more, what would you do? And let's figure out what those processes are so that as AI is starting to take out some of those repetitive things that you have to do, you, you aren't scared. You aren't thinking that AI is taking over your job. You're excited because now AI is taking over all the things that you don't want to do anymore. And you can go do these more fun, exciting things. Right. So I strongly encourage people to, to just, like I said, to just try it, just just see what you can get um, out of it. And if you are interested in uh, to learn more about AI, uh, follow CoreLogic. We do have an ebook out on this topic. We've got a blog. And then, of course, I hope to see you all at Interconnect in January.